Hi everybody, this is Mark Tennis of Cal High Sports. Welcome to our first edition of the CIF Bowl Board on Cal High Sports. What I'm going to do today is explain to people what and how the CIF Bowl games are going to work this year, how I think they're going to work. I have been in the room when they have picked the teams, and this is kind of a, a better uh, way of showing people how it's going to work. We're still getting tons of questions from coaches and writers about the CIF games, how they're going to work this year. It's amazing how many people will still say, if we win this section title, are we going to go to a bowl game? Well, everyone's going to go to a bowl game. That's number one. Number two, forget about what divisions you're in in your section. It doesn't matter. When you look at this board, all the teams are going to be listed in order from number one seed all the way down to the bottom. Same in the South, number one seed all the way down to the bottom. That's how it's going to work. So what we're going to do today is give people a good idea of how this is going to work on Selection Sunday, which is December 6th. As you can see, we'll go over the North board first. I want people to keep in mind these rankings were done as of November 18th, 2015. So a lot of these teams may not be on the board on December the 6th. In fact, a lot of them probably won't. We, we know we're going to have upsets. Happens all the time. I just wanted this to be an idea to tell people how this is going to work. So first of all, we'll go over the North teams on the board as of today. Of De La Salle on the top in Northern California. No surprise there. They're in the North Coast section, Division 1. Folsom is next. Zach Joaquin section, Division 1. Clayton Valley, North Coast section, Division 2, which lost to Folsom by one point. Folsom, of course, is going to have a very tough game with Elk Grove, most likely. Bellarmine, San Jose, CCS, Open Division 1. St. Francis, Mountain View, CCS, Open Division 2. Grant, Sacramento, Sac Joaquin, Division 2. Central Catholic of Modesto, Sac Joaquin, Division 3. Clovis, Central Section, Division 1. Camp Olindo, North Coast Section, Division 3. Marin Catholic, North Coast Section, Division 4. Valley Christian San Jose is the first of the CCS runner-up teams, which we would project to be the runner-up to St. Francis in Division 2. Reardon of San Francisco, we would project to be the winner of the CCS Division 3 Open Division. They're going to have a real tough game right away with Palma in the, probably in the, in the uh, semifinals. Pleasant Valley of Chico, Northern Section Division 2. Milpitas, CCS Open Division, another runner-up team from the CCS. Capital Christian of Sacramento is Sac Joaquin Division 5. McClymonds is Oakland Section. Hanford is Central Section Division 3. Hillmar is Sac Joaquin Section Division 6. Orland is Northern Section Division 2, or Division 3. Mission of San Francisco is the San Francisco team. Calaveras is Sac Joaquin Section Division 4. And you'll notice we have some lower Sac Joaquin teams higher than Division 4. So again, divisions don't matter in this system. Berean Christian, Northern North Coast Section Division 5. Emmanuel of Reedley is Central Section Division that's Division 4, Division 3. No, Division 4. Uh, no, excuse me, Division 5. Winters is Northern Section, uh, Division 4. Fall River is the Northern Section, Division 5. And Stone Ridge Christian is Sac Joaquin Section, Division 7. Those are all the section champions that we're using as an example for this presentation today. Now we'll move over to the South. These are the projected 25 teams in the South as of today, based on rankings, based on projections, and etc. At the top, I'm going to list both teams, Centennial and St. John Bosco, 11-0. These could be two of the greatest teams we've ever had in Southern California, based on what they've been doing so far. So it would be ridiculous to list one over the other, so I'm not going to. I'm going to list them both at 11-0. They're projected to make the Pac-5 championship game and what would be an awesome showdown. And uh, the winner of probably going to play De La Salle, of course, in the open division. But that's, that's Southern Section Pac-5. The next team on the, on the list is Mission Viejo, which is Southern Section West Valley Division. 
Then we have Mission Hills, San Diego Open Division, Narbonne, LA City Division One, Camarillo, Southern Section, that would be the that would be the Northern Division. La Habra is Southern Section Southwest. Ridgeview is the top overall team ranked right now in the central section. They're in their Division II bracket. Calabasas is Southern Section Western Division. Heritage is Southern Section Inland Valley Division or Inland Division. Palm Springs is the Eastern Division of the Southern Section. Rancho Bernardo is actually in the San Diego in Division II. Summit is Southern Section Central Division. Los Angeles High is Division II in the LA City. Sierra Canyon is Mid Valley Division in the Southern Section. Oceanside is Division I in San Diego. La Serna is the Southeast Division of the Southern Section. Modern Day Catholic is San Diego Division IV. Bonita Vista is San Diego Division III. Garden Grove is Southern Section Southern Division. Grace Brethren is Southern Section East Valley Division. No, Southern Section East Valley Division. And Notre Dame of Riverside is Southern Section Northwest Division. Belmont of LA is the LA City Division Three. Central Valley Christian is the Central Section um, Division. That's Central Section Division Four. Um, La Jolla Country Day is San Diego Section Division Five, and Kennedy of Delano is Division Six in the Central Section. So that is the board as it looks as of today. Now, what the commissioners are going to do when they look at these teams on the board? They're going to come into the room and they're going to say, okay, the first step is who's going to be in the open division. Okay, well, assuming De La Salle wins his 24th consecutive North Coast section title, De La Salle is going to be it in the North and the winner of the Southern Section Pack 5. So they're going to take these teams off the board and they're going to match them up. That's your open division game. That should take them a, uh, about five seconds, maybe 10 seconds. Um, then the next thing the commissioners are going to do is they're going to select the teams that will be in the small schools open division. This is a new game the CIF is tinkering with. We'll see how it goes. I have my druthers because I think Northern California has so many good schools in that enrollment range of 1,250, and the South may not have as many eligible teams to choose. So if you look at the board at this point, going down by the rankings, you're going to you're going to say who are the who are the top teams, the top two teams that that, that fall into that enrollment bracket, and it's going to be if, you, if using these teams as an example, it's going to be Central Catholic, and then it's going to be Marin Catholic, so they're going to be the next team. That's going to be open, small, open, small. And then you look at the South bracket, and who are the, next, the top teams that fall into that enrollment? It's going to be Sierra Canyon, and then it's going to be Modern Day Catholic. And again, these are based on on who we think is going to win, and who is projected to win. But these definitely can change. Modern Day Catholic, for example, definitely, right in San Diego alone, Santa Fe Christian is the number two seed behind Bonita Vista. And if, if Santa Fe Christian were to win that division, I think they could even go ahead of Modern Day Catholic, even though Modern Day Catholic will be undefeated on the field. But for the purposes of this demonstration, those would be your two Southern Open Division teams. So then these two teams would play each other, and then these two teams would play each other, and then the winners would play in the state championship in the first open division small schools game. So as you can tell, if it was Central Catholic and Marin Catholic, Sierra Canyon might actually give one of those two a, a pretty good game, but it, we're not sure how Sierra Canyon at that level, Central Catholic's definitely proven with some of their wins, like over St. Mary's of Stockton and others, that they can play at a really high level. Sierra Canyon, not as much, but we'll have to see about that. So now you look at the board and you say, okay, take these teams out of the equation, take these out, and then you're going to start, they're going to start matching up the teams as they go along. 
So your, your next two teams in order here, that's D1AA. And the next two teams here would be D1AA. So you're going to have Folsom against Clayton Valley in the north, Mission Viejo against Mission Hills in the south. Now, of course, they could, this could change. At the end of the day, Folsom could end up losing to Elk Grove, perhaps. And then Bellarmine might have a stronger argument to be the three spot instead of Clayton Valley. We'll have to wait for C for those kind of things. But I wanted to show people how this is going to work. And so then the next division, if you can follow me, would be right here. These next two teams on the board would be Bellarmine and St. Francis, D1A. And then over here, you've got Narbonne and Camarillo, D1A. So these two would play these two. The winners would play each other. Now, this is where things start getting interesting right away. If this actually were to happen, the commissioners are going to look at the board and they're going to say, well, here's Bellarmine and St. Francis right next to each other. Do we want them to play a rematch right away or do we want them to go play somebody else? And they can start messing with the order as soon as, as, soon as this, this part of the, of, the, of the board. And there's merit to, to, to not having Bellarmine and St. Francis play each other right away. But it also would get a lot of people interested in the CCS, so maybe they do. And if you look at it in the north, what, are the, what would be the options if Bellarmine, if Bellarmine wins out and then is, on the, is, is in this spot, who, who are they going to play? Do we want to have Grant go to San Jose and play them? They would be the next team in line in this, in this example. Um, I'm not sure the CIF really wants Grant, given the horrible thing and tragic thing that happened for that school is going to want to put Grant on the road at Bellarmine. They may want to try to think of Grant as perhaps playing a game you know, at home or playing a game to get to the final in Sacramento, where a crowd would obviously be huge. They might look at it that way. Why not just put Bellarmine and St. Francis against each other? And then, as you see, Grant would be next. They wouldn't play Central Catholic because they're in the open division small. They would play Clovis. So you have Grant, D2AA. And you have Clovis D2AA. And then over here in the south, you have La Habra D2AA and Ridgeview are, the, are D2AA. So as you can tell, you kind of go down the list as the teams get selected and you'll have some interesting matchups. But the CIF is going to be able to look at the board and alter this, alter these matchups where they see fit based on crowds, based on matchups. They're, they're calling them placements. They're not seeding the team. They're placing the teams. So if you look at this board over here, an interesting matchup is perhaps Camarillo, which we have uh, playing Narbonne in D1AA. Uh, the CIF might look at the board and say, look at Calabasas here. They actually played, and it was 40-39. to 39. It was a great game. Maybe a rematch would be, would be great. Now, would they alter the board enough to put Calabasas, maybe have La Habra play Narbonne and Camarillo play Calabasas and Ridgeview play Heritage? There's nothing wrong with any of those teams. They're all pretty close teams. When you start getting to La Habra, Ridgeview, Calabasas, and Heritage, those four teams, you can throw a blanket over them, really. There's hard to, you, know, you can look at computer rankings and whatever, but the CIF is going to look at these and say, what matchups do we think are going to work the best? For the purposes of this discussion, I'm going to just leave it according to the rankings. And you'll see we have Camarillo playing Narbonne, which for Camarillo would be a challenge. It would be a great game. Ridgeview playing La Habra. And then opposite Ridgeview and La Habra, you have Clovis against Grant. So that would be your D2AA matchup. So then obviously Clovis, being the Central Section Division I champion, would play in Grant of two Valley teams, that makes sense. So if we continue on down the board, in D2A, you're gonna have Campolindo against Valley Christian, which actually would be a good matchup for two very highly ranked Bay Area teams. Two, D2A in the South would be Calabasas against Heritage. Again, a, a good matchup of teams. Heritage wants to step up and play some good competition. Playing Calabasas definitely would do that. And then you keep going down the list, and you go D3AA is next. 
So the next two teams in line would be Reardon against Pleasant Valley in the north and the south would be Palm Springs. against Rancho Bernardo, which is a pretty highly ranked San Diego team, even with two losses. And then you go D4A, you have, now this is gets kind of weird here, D4A, D4A, you have Capital Christian against Milpitas. Now Milpitas is going to be a runner-up team, and if they're down here in D4A, and on the south you have Summit against uh, Oceanside, Excuse me, I made a mistake. That's D3A right here. D3A. D3A. This is D3A. Summit and Oceanside are D3A. Right there, D3A. So, um, but if you look at Milpitas playing Capital Christian, Milpitas is a, that's a pretty big school. I don't know if playing Capital Christian really makes a lot of sense. On the other hand, you know, that's where a runner-up in the CCS is going to do a lot of damage, a second-place team. And this second-place teams from the CCS being in there, you get a Milpitas that, that can play Capital Christian and then might play an Oceanside or a Summit. Milpitas and Oceanside or Summit would probably be pretty good, but... Capital Christian, that would be a tough matchup for them to have to go up against the Milpitas if they were to win their division. Now, Capital Christian, of course, is in there with Sonora, and there's no guarantee they're going to win that. So that could be a tough matchup. But that's where things get kind of weird with the enrollments, the big schools. There's another one even, even more bizarre later on. So then you go to D, um, next is D4AA. That's the next division, right? Yeah, D4AA. So you have McClymans against Hanford. And then in the, then you have uh, the next teams here would be Lucerna and um, Bonita Vista, which would be D4AA. And then you have um, D4A, which would be Hillmar and Orland. And then they would be opposite Garden Grove and Grace Brethren. Is this right? Let's see. I got Lucerna. Did I miss somebody in here? I missed LA High in here, didn't I? I'm sorry, I missed LA High. So this is going to be messed up again. I missed LA High right here. So LA High is going to be in uh, D3. Uh, D3A with Summit instead of um, instead of Oceanside, but this also illustrates how how this whole thing gets messed up with one upset. If one team were to get up here or one team were to knock somebody down, the whole order gets messed up. See, I forgot to put LA High in their correct division, but that's where they would be. So they would be in there. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically, you can see how this is all going to work. And you get down to the bottom. These are the two teams at the bottom, the Sac Joaquin uh, Division 7 and Northern Section Division 5. They're probably going to play ahead of time. So there'll be a winner of those, that game will be in this spot. That, one of those will be eliminated already. So we'll have 25 in the north and 25 in the south. So, you know, ignoring my L.A. High mistake right here, apologies to all you Roman fans out there. But um, apologies to them, but you can see how it all kind of flows down. You look at some of the bottom ones here, though, um, with Belmont right here in this spot here. If, if this board were to fill out, Belmont and Central Valley Christian would actually play each other. And uh, that would be in the next to last division. And Belmont is one of the biggest schools in California in terms of population, but they're in terms of enrollment, but they're... They're Division Three in LA City, and they really their strength of schedule is not real good, and that's actually where they fall. So to have a game Belmont versus Central Valley Christian, which is a very small school of three or four hundred kids, would be very interesting, and I would 
I would kind of hope it would be fun to watch to see that game. But th that gives you an idea of some of the things that the CIF is going to be looking for. And if you want to see a lot of these matchups, you'll see we'll be doing more things online. We also have a uh, small schools open division breakdown that's on Cal High Sports right now. So if you want to see that, go to our site. And please, please, if you have a chance to subscribe, um, it's only $19 and probably for another, only for another week. Um, you know, check it out. You can get a lot of our content for, 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 uh, for premium. A lot of it is free, uh, but it's really good stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Appreciate the time and everybody good luck in the playoffs. Thank you very much.